So flaky and buttery. Holy moly. This is a heck of a success. <laughs> this morning, I woke up with a really big craving for egg tarts. You know, those iconic Hongkanese egg tarts? Well, that was sort of a blessing in disguise because I had a stacks of egg just waiting for me in the fridge. So guess what we're doing today? Hongkanese egg tart. I can foresee this as being a two-fold challenge. The first one will obviously to replicate that yolky yet not so sweet metal custard. But then where it's gonna be really difficult for me will be to do that flaky crust that should hold together and not totally crumble before we actually bite into it. I hope it's gonna work because I'm really craving it. Now, let's do it. Just like how you tackle a challenge by taking the bowl by the horns, we're gonna start with the crust. We will need flour, sugar, salt, and water. In a large bowl, insert a cup and a half of flour. Notice how I failed to add the last third of the required quantity. This will lead to a tiny disaster, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's keep baking. To what should have been one cup and a half of flour, add two thirds of a cup of water, room temperature, as well as a pinch of salt. Whisk everything together. As you can see, this dough is way too liquid. The next step is to knead the dough. This in itself should have been a clear indication that something was wrong. But no, I am not one to give up easily and did my best to develop some sort of gluten out of this um, super sticky mess. I did have growing doubts about this mixture output and decided to check back on the Babish website. Turns out it's normal. No, it's not. But let's continue, shall we? 20 minutes of magic thinking later, I was still stuck with a runny and not structure wannabe dough. That's when I decided to add half a cup of flour, which actually solved everything. After a few strikes, the mess turned into its smooth and elastic alter ego. See? Much better. I let this one rest for another 10 minutes to relax, but then you shouldn't have to do that because you won't make my mistake. We can finally roll out and shape the dough. Welcome back our vodka bottle, which will stand as our rolling device. Hmm? Sprinkle flour on top of the ball, as well as on your chosen rolling pin. Make sure your butter is room temperature and cut it in four. Start by rolling out the dough into a rough square shape. Really rough. <laughs> Make some visual cues about each third, then shamelessly cover two thirds of the surface with one piece of butter. Then fold the third without the butter onto the middle and fold the other end over and roll again. You've guessed correctly, we're making layers of butter dough. Repeat the process until you've run out of butter. Aim for the longer side of the rectangle shape and time to roll. You'll want to cover the resulting cylinder in some sort of wrap and leave it in the fridge for two hours. Meanwhile, clean your working surface as we're about to prepare the custard. The custard requires warm water to dilute sugar into a sugary syrup. You can plug in a kettle like, like this or choose the easier option of simply putting water into the microwave. Grab three big eggs, like this beauty. Oh, here are two more. Oops. Give them a little stir and add some vanilla extract as well as half a cup of evaporated milk. Again, make sure all of these people get to know each other well. Ah, the water is ready. In a separate bowl, pour half a cup of that hot water with a quarter cup of sugar. Stir until the sugar is completely dissolved and let it rest until cooled down. Once the sugar syrup no longer threatens to cook our liquid eggs, pour the eggs in. Make sure to strain our custard to catch any lumps. Smooth liquid custard. 
mustard. I forgot to mention that during all this time, your oven should have been preheating at 400 Fahrenheit. Take out your muffin tray from the oven and start coating it with butter. If possible, uh, use a towel or a pastry brush because... Ow! Yep, that's hot and might give your finger an unwanted red color. After two hours in the cold, your glorious dough is ready to become a crust. Unwrap the good and chop half of it in six equal parts. Admire the beautiful swirls you created with the infinite layer of butter. Take one piece and flatten it down a bit. Put it at the center of one of the muffin rams. Press down the pastry using your index and your thumb and gently press up against the sides. Repeat, 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 and ta-da! Then last but not least, pour the custard into each pastry. Fill them up to 90% and make sure to leave some space so that the upper rim crust can gold it. And bye bye my friend! Off to the oven for 20 minutes. ba ba, -ba -da! Oh yeah! My oven clearly has some heat distribution issues. But it looks like we have a couple of egg tarts that turn out pretty good. Uh, let them cool down a little bit and then pull them out with a knife. If you flip the tart over, you should be able to admire the gorgeous circular layers of crispy crust created by your butter. These two are going back into the oven for one last beauty touch. <laughs> I'm giggling so much because I can't believe I made them without burning them. It, it feels very good. Baking and cooking with success is very good for the ego. Just saying. These looks great. I mean, look at this baby. Yeah. I agree. These look a lot more like pastage donata than actual um, Hong Kongese egg tart. Mainly because you can see on the top it caramelized a little bit as well as puffed up. But, I mean, I like both versions of the egg tart, so I don't really mind. Now, will it be as crispy as we want it to be? Let's hear it. Mmm. Oh, wow. Uh, assessment time. The custard is obviously very flaky, super buttery, extremely crunchy. Now, the custard, however, if we wanted to have the real traditional Hong Kong style, it would need to have more of a jello type of structure. This one is very smooth and creamy. Is it bad? No. Is it Hong Kong style? Not really. Am I still gonna eat it? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Look at all these puff layers we worked so hard for. Despite the initial hiccups with the pastry, whew, perfect. I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> I know this is a lot of fat in the back, but oh, I've come a long way. So this is it for today's recipe. Let me know your thoughts. How differently would you have done it? Actually, if anybody knows how to do kind of a jello type of structure, let me know in the comments below, please. And on this, I'll see you next time.